Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian. I'm William. This is the podcast where we talk about everything tabletop role-playing games. And today we are talking about the Ankeg. Let's finish this monster manual. Hey, Will. Hey, hey Brian. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> How you doing? I'm, I'm hyped now. <laughs> good, I'm good. I want to be hyped. I want to do it. I want to <laughs> finish the monster manual. We're getting close, man. It's been seven years. <laughs> it's Yeah, it has been. Since we cracked its bindings. <laughs> so that's right. We are getting dangerously close to finally completing our monster mythos series when it comes to the 2014 monster manual. And like many of the straggling monster mythos topics of the last couple of years, this monster continues a running theme shared by the Boulet, the Umber Hulk, and the like. Mm -hmm. This is a classic first edition advanced D&D monster. It does not have a basis on any mythology or folklore that I am aware of, and it lives underground. Also, it eats people. It's just a dude. Yeah, it's just, it's just a people. nasty D&D monster. It's a classic D&D monster. I'm into it. So today we are talking about the Ankeg, or Ankeg, an insectile monstrosity that, in my opinion, makes the Umber Hulk look pretty tame, despite it being only a CR2 monster. Uh, I don't know if you remember in the Umber Hulk episode, but the lore of the Umber Hulk really, really emphasizes how hideous it is. And don't get me wrong, the Umber Hulk is ugly. The Ankeg is uglier. It's uglier than... than I think. It's not part of his lore. I just think it's uglier. Yeah, if the Kool-Aid man was in the Underdark, it would be pretty ugly. Yeah. And he wasn't a like an open pitcher of juice, sugar juice. <laughs> Any questions, comments, or concerns before we just dive right into it? Um, is this the is this the first thing you see when you open the monster manual? Like the physical It's book? up there. It's, it's like one there. of the first ones, it's right? Like, no, Angels Angels beat it. E oh, Aarakocra. They're the first thing. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. An onkeg resembles an enormous many-legged insect or worm. It has a huge segmented body with six legs ending in sharp hooks suitable for burrowing or grasping. A tough chitinous brown shell covers its entire body, though some specimens are yellow rather than brown. And glistening black eyes stare out from above powerful mandibles. These mandibles, lined with tiny rows of chitinous teeth, are capable of snapping a small tree in half with a single bite. Cool. It has two long antennae twitching in response to any movement around it. Your average onkeg is about ten feet. Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking up a <laughs> I was looking up a thing for a joke. Uh, but three uh, ten feet is like three meters, right? Three meters long and weighs about eight hundred pounds. Three hundred and sixty two <laughs> kilograms, folks. <laughs> I'm glad I went back to the notes for that. <laughs> the Ankeg made its first appearance in Dragon Magazine number five in which in March of nineteen seventy seven. Uh, this was later reprinted in the Monster Manual of 1977. Um, it is technically the featured creature of the uh, entire issue, but despite this, it only has a single paragraph of information dedicated to it in the entire issue. This one's all physical design, baby. Mm -hmm. It is a cool-looking monster. It is. It's a very monstrous-looking monster. It's a, it looks like a and monster. I that. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. what this thing's about. Mm -hmm. You need a bad guy that isn't, you know, like morally questionable necessarily. <laughs> well, that's a monster. Yeah, no, that's... A <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Ankeg are lurkers in the earth. They use their powerful mandibles to dig winding tunnels deep beneath the ground. When hunting, <clears throat> an Ankeg bur burrows upward, waiting below the surface until its antennae detect movement from above. Then the Ankeg bursts from the earth and seizes prey in its mandibles, crushing and grinding while it secre secretes acidic digestive enzymes. Mm. These enzymes help dissolve a victim for easy swallowing. But the Ankeg can also squirt acid <laughs> to take down foes. Oh my god. This is a... Uh, you have to do a special walk across the sand to make sure that it doesn't... <laughs> you it's walk. here. I watched it Dune. Ah. Dude... <laughs> I could talk about Dune 1 and 2 and the book series for fucking hours. I'm counting on it. I'm counting on it. Check out our special uh, A Tear in Space content on Patreon. For me, the current Dune movies, even with their deviations from the book, are literal dreams come true for me. I'm but glad. Anyways. I'm happy for you. Thank you. Why wasn't the Ankeg in Dune? <laughs> Spoilers because, for Dune. Because sandworms are cooler. 
They are pretty cool. <laughs> Ant kegs usually carve out their territories in forests or choice agricultural land, boring tunnels 30 to 40 feet deep in the rich soil of forests or farmlands. Although ant kegs receive a certain portion of their nutrients from the soil through which they burrow, they must supplement their diet with fresh meat. Pastures teeming with grazing livestock and forests rife with game are an ant keg's prime hunting ground. Uh, ant eggs are thus the bane of farmers and rangers everywhere. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Where did the dirt go in ant keg? Ant keg eat dirt. Dirt go through ant keg? Um, I don't think it eats all the dirt. I think it pushes it to the side. Well, it's using its fucking mouth to do it, so... Well, maybe the acid is... Mm. Um, yeah, some dirt's going to get pushed, yeah, but like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a lot gets pushed. Is there a special tube in the have you seen the the... shapes of their head they're like they're like arrowhead like kind of shaped right so they they, it gets it slides to the side they're slides to the side (laughs) they're they're dirty dynamic they're (laughs) um yeah they're dirty dynamic yeah i think there's a tube a special tube underneath the mandibles of some kind maybe inside that has uh it's an earth shoot yeah dirt yeah they shoot that earth right behind them (laughs) That's how they go so fast. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> on, kegs tu- on keg tunnels resemble a maze in their random design. Although these corridors wind in relatively straight paths, they change depth, intersect with other, other tunnels, and often end abruptly. There are usually only one or two entrances into the tunnels, uh, though others sometimes appear when the on keg bursts up from beneath the surface to surprise its prey. The tunnels are generally only as wide and tall as the on keg itself, about three to six feet wide, and I'm sorry I missed the metric on that, and four to ten feet high. So like one to two to three meters, <laughs> somewhere in there. <laughs> the hollowed ends of an on keg's tunnel often serves as a temporary layer for sleeping, eating, or hibernating. When an on keg exhausts the food supply in a particular forest or field, it moves on to another. And that's, to me, one of the key, like, indicators on whether a creature is truly a monster or not. Does a mo- does the creature completely destroy its environment and live an unsustainable life and then move on? Hello, humans. I was going to say. <laughs> Hello, humans. I see you. Hasbro, are you listening? <laughs> okay, sure. That's a good one, too. Um on kegs live in cold climates, hibernate during the winter. Uh, within a month after the first snowfall, the on keg fashions a layer deep within the warm earth where it remains dormant until spring. The hibernating on keg requires no food, subsisting instead on nutrients stored in its shell. Though the on keg's metabolism is reduced, its antennae remain functional, able to alert it to the approach of an intruder. Uh, a disturbed onkeg might fully awaken, after which time it can and will attack. The onkeg does not hoard treasure. Items that were not dissolved by the acidic enzymes fall where they often drop from the onkeg's mandibles. As it burrows through the earth, the onkeg leaves a narrow, partially collapsed tunnel in its wake. In these tunnels, one might find the remnants of molted onkeg chitin, hatched onkeg eggs, or the grisly remains of onkeg victims, including coins or other treasures scattered during the creature's attack. DMs take note of that last paragraph because that's everything you need to <laughs> set up this monster indeed funnily enough even though a hungry on keg can be fatal to a farmer and their livestock it can also be quite beneficial to the farmland itself its tunnel system laces the soil with passages for air and water while the on keg's waste product products add rich nutrients okay so it's not completely destroying its right uh, i think un- i think with a little bit of um intervention it can be a vital uh, part of an ecosystem. That's what Snorlax do. He eat everything, but then all the stuff grow. Yeah, there you go. But I think without oversight and intervention, these things run amok. Where do all the food go that Snorlax eat? Does it just go straight out the... <laughs> I'm not a Snorlaxologist, so I can't tell you. A, a Snorologist. Exactly. Um, autumn is mating season for on kegs. After the male fertilizes the female, the female kills him, bites off his head, and deposits 2D6 fertilization in his body. <laughs> How romantic. <laughs> I love that. It's randomized by 2D6. <laughs> Within a few weeks, about 75% of the eggs hatch and begin feeding. In a year, the young on kegs resemble adults and can function independently. And every year thereafter, the on keg functions with full adult capabilities. Uh, I can't... <laughs> What? I can't wait to kill my husband someday. I don't think it's a husband. I think it's I can't wait to kill the next one night stand. 
Prey Mantis style. They, these things kind of look like Prey Mantis a little they bit, do. right? Yeah. They're definitely Prey Mantis. Uh, it's a good influence. model for what's going on here. Absolutely. I think Prey Mantis don't lay the eggs in the body, though. I do not think that is a thing they do. No, I think they just kind of stick them somewhere. I think, um, and, and maybe it's based off of a creature that actually does this, but my memory, the only thing I can come up with is I know some wasps plant their eggs in like the bodies of, of tarantulas. Oh, yeah, there is a, a type of wasp, I think, that, that yeah, does that. Yeah, exactly. So it's like you you plant the... And then there's also the the creatures, and I'm hard. It, it's hard for me to come up with the name of one, but I've heard of um, arthropods that like l have the eggs hatch inside them, and then they eat the mother. Oh that. yeah, that's a yeah, thing that's too. That's a thing too. But anyways, <laughs> beginning in its second year of life, the onkeg sheds its chitinous shell just before the onset of winter. It takes the onkeg two days to shed its old shell and two weeks to grow a new one. During this time, the sluggish onkeg is exceptionally vulnerable. Its overall AC is reduced. Additionally, it moves only at half its normal speed. Its mandible attack inflicts less damage and is unable to squirt acidic enzymes. While growing a new shell, it protects itself by hiding in a deep tunnel and secreting a repulsive fluid that smells like rotten fruit. Though the aroma discourages most creatures, it can also pinpoint the Ankeg's location for human hunters and desperately hungry predators. Okay. Is there a section of the Plain of Ooze that is just this Ankeg acid? Sure. <laughs> Why sick. not? I'd believe it. <laughs> Typically, onkegs are solitary creatures that jealously guard their territories, but some have been known to live and travel in pairs. And even rarer are onkegs that hunt and live in groups known as clusters. Okay. The onkeg, like many giant carnivorous monsters, does not have any natural predators. And that is another key indicator in D&D of whether this thing is a fucking monster or not. Um, destroys its habitat, has no natural predators. Yeah, invasive. They, they, they... I see you, humans. Sorry. <laughs> they hit all the marks of uh, invasive species. Indeed, they do. Um, but they do have a contentious rivalry slash antagony with giant ants with which compete with them for territory. So if a hive of giant ants manages to kill or drive away an ant cake from their nest, the broodlings left behind are often made to serve the giant ant colony. Okay. I didn't realize that. How giant are we talking for these ants? Very big. Very, like uh, Honey like, Shrunk the Kids? Stat, like, si well, come on. That's just a normal size ant. It's well, the yes, people that are small. In, refer <laughs> in reference to the people, though. That's like building size ants. Is it? Okay, maybe that's too big. <laughs> are we I talking like, like car size, size like ants? Sheep. The size of sheep. That's a fucking big ass yeah, ant. Big ant with, the, with some being bigger, right? Yeah, like and the warrior they have a lower sense, center of gravity bear than sheep, size. right? Bear, bear size, size ants. ants. For the warriors. There's some winged ones too, right? Yeah. Probably. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, maybe Bro. the physics break down because... You need to play some Elden Ring because you go underground and you fight car-sized ants and it's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds bad. It's Yeah, it's bad. There's like an old black and white I watched with my dad with like something about the attack of the giant ants or whatever, you mm -hmm. know, like... The, like there was a movie Some called like the, black and white the blob or yeah, the, I like, i've yeah. seen the blob yeah, yeah that's like <laughs> around the same time yeah that's cool i yeah. like those kind of movies <laughs> the ant keg shell harvested from a slain ant keg weighs roughly 100 pounds that's 45 kilograms armorers talented enough can forge armor from these shells it takes three days to make the armor is very nearly as effective as full plate mail but weighs considerably less and can be worn by warriors who usually cannot wear such heavy armor mm. the ankeg's eyes and the fluid therein are useful to alchemists and magic users in the creation of sight related magic potions and items likewise the ankeg's digestive acid can be salvaged and utilized as a regular acid this chemical maintains its properties for up to six months after the ankeg's death this chemical can only be carried in a glass container is highly susceptible to breakage as a result okay there is a secondary enzyme sac located in the creature's head, very similar to a small acid-resistant bladder. Recovering this fluid uh, from the ankeg requires very adept hands, as it is very easy to break this sac accidentally. Failure to successfully remove the sac without breakage results in damage to the handler. Aside from this, the ankeg's mandibles make reasonably good axe heads, and its legs, if cured and preserved, may be used as maces and other concussive weaponry. I was going to save this for the end. But, we're just breaking we're, down this whole fucking monster. Well, that's the thing is, like, this, this monster doesn't have lore necessarily. The lore 
would come from like the wizard or whoever is like trying to harvest the materials of this thing. Right. I'm glad this is here. I was waiting for it. I saw the Dragon Magazine tag at the top of the episode. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, you they're gonna go. they're gonna talk about how they fucks. Yep. And we're gonna that. talk about how you can sell their parts yes, for exactly. money. Exactly. Yep, yep. And we'll, or apply here them. We are. Here we are. I guess you can just so you can have a uh an underdark culture of barbarians that uses ankeg legs for bases and absolutely blunt staffs absolutely. and stuff like that. That's fun. Right now, my my player D and D dream is to play a fighter or ranger who just goes full monster hunter, like kills these suckers, skins them down, builds armor and weapons out of them, sells them, builds shit for their allies, builds shit for themselves. There's just- actually a character builder in the very final issue of Dragon Magazine that is like, here's how to apply all the things we taught you about monsters fucking. <laughs> as a character yep absolutely <laughs> it's all been leading up to this by removing the meat inside and replacing it with some substance to provide weight sand or metal these appendages can be formed into weapons delivering the same damage as their counterpart there you go just slide some bricks in there <laughs> just put some bricks in there <laughs> you know what fuck it just use a brick <laughs> just use a brick um that's all i got on on kegs okay. besides the stat block which i'll get Ready for the short rest? Yeah. Let's go. It's the grand adventures of Alien and Beard. Um, let's see if my calculations are correct. This would mean that the triangulation of... Yes, I'm beginning to see it. Yes, I'm beginning. What you doing? Whoa, Ben! Hi. How, <laughs> how many times have I told you to not interrupt me during my... Intellectual musing. At least a few. Is that what you were doing? Yes, I was intellectually musing. Sorry. I didn't... I'm trying to triangulate the location of the next shard that we'll be searching for. You see, if I take into account the locations of which we found these three in relation to where the Eldritch Ass Blast occurred, as well as where we were launched when it all happened, which I believe was Hades. Man, we've been some places. Um... I oh, think I'd be able yeah. to mathematically, at least approximately, locate all of the shards, theoretically. But I, I, it's a lot of math, so we'll do it one at a time. Man, I'm so bored right now. I, big picture, yes. Little picture, this is why you do what you do, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Have I ever told you where I drove a triangle-shaped pike into a triangle-shaped creature's head? Well, the head of it was triangle. Have you ever heard of an onkeg? Yes, I'm aware of what an onkeg is. I stabbed that mother trucker right in its gullet. Yes. I I ripped its mandibles from its face. I'm imagining the spear was ruined afterwards because those are shitty enzymes. So no I joke. left the spear in its body and I Whoa. I ripped off its legs and I used those as my next weapons. Really? I was dual wielding legs, man. Please ex- explain the process, please. It's just a just a big rip. You got to demeat them, right? <laughs> so so you just rip the things off. You can t- kind of twist them. They're weak at the joints, and then you pull the meat out. And sometimes there's these little like tough stringy things in there that you kind of got to work. And you can cook it and eat it. Don't get the poison stuff on it. But you, can, I saw a man eat a lot of ankeg meat. And oh man, it was like, you know, we were doing this. Fascinating. It was cool. Like, we figured out how to do this weird swoopy walk to sort of not alert them to our presence because they can tremor sense, apparently. And when we got into their den, we had some, we threw some rocks on the ground. They went to go, they're so dumb. This, let me tell you, Yelian, this is the dumbest animal I've made, the dumbest creature I've ever come across. Really? It was so dumb. Dumber than an ooze, even. I don't know about that. But it's got to be close. I think if this thing was any stupider, it would be dead. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> Mechanically speaking. Uh, an uncommon fact of our world is when you reach an intelligence of nothing, you just die. Yeah, that, that seemed about right. I think if I, like, sort of found a way to deliver some brain damage, it would just kind of not exist. But anyway, ripped off the arms, ate the meat, uh, de- de- de-meated the claws, and then I filled them with bricks. With bricks. Yeah, there were bricks around from an ancient civilization that had, like, set up shop maybe a long time ago. But I I pulled all the bricks from the ruins and I... Ben, looked. you defaced history. I uh, put bricks in an onkeg leg. I meant I brought the bricks with me on the journey. I like to carry a bag of bricks like any good adventurer in case somebody tries to steal my bag. Unless you, in case you need to build a fortification in on the In case I need to build a fortification, yeah. I've never, I don't even know what ruins are. I've never touched anything like that in my life. But I, man, did they pack a wall up. They were just, they were sort of cumbersome. Well, you essentially were whacking people with a 
line of bricks. Yeah, and the, the, you know, they had sharp claw stuff on, you know, wrapped up in them. You know, that's got to do at least 2d6 bludgeoning damage. I did. Non-magical, though. It was pretty much the equivalent of the pike I was using before, but bludge. So not really uh, an upgrade, more of a lateral pivot. Well, like you said, I was with people knowledgeable in the beast's kind of uh, physiology, and they said, yes. that, that's, that pike is ruined, my guy. And I yeah. said, well, I'll just leave it in here, and I'm going to use this thing. So I ripped that thing right off. Anyway, you said stuff about triangles that made me think. We've got three of oh. these shards, and if yeah. you just sort of set them on the table like this, maybe the... Oh! My research! Oh, it's beaconing! I've activated... I think I'm starting to get how these things work. We just kind of beacon them up. We do stuff to make a beacon, and they'll call each other's pieces to each other. You know what I mean? Look, it's doing, but uh, it's just sending a, a beam of light straight up into the sky. <laughs> this could only mean one thing, Ben. What is that? Are you sure only one thing? We need an airship. Turn. Indeed we are. We're fucking back. Indeed we are. We're scraping the last, the bottom of the barrel pages out of the monster manual, and we're, we're yeah, we're, them. we're getting there. I think there's like, le there's got to be less than ten. I think there's less than ten monsters. That's sick. And some of them I'm saving because they're elemental, so that we're gonna dole them out throughout the year. But that's that the the show will go on. There will be a new monster manual, and there are more monsters to talk about in other places. Yeah, and it's not like monsters. we've done every single monster from Mordekai and Monsters of the Multiverse either. So right. Non the monsters non will probably never end, and then when the all these get reprinted, we'll revisit them. Yeah, there will be one day where we like never talk about monsters again on the show in this context. You remember monsters, Brian? Do you remember when we did stat blocks? We read them all, Brian. We read them all. Hey, like it or not, sixth edition oh. will come eventually. It, it will come eventually. I predict we will get a sixth edition. Let's see, it's 2024. I predict six. We'll be smelling sixth edition by 2030. Okay. Like we'll be getting rumors, I think. We'll see. Well, I'll I'll hold you to it. We'll I mean, bookmark this episode. Just hot take. I know that's my hot take right now. Uh, just for reference, by like, I think first edition ran the longest, right? But even that doesn't really count because first edition you have the boxed edition, and then we roll into. I know there's another version before advanced kicks in, and advanced is technically first edition, and we don't get second edition until the '80s. Yeah. So we're looking at like I think. 10 years of first edition and then we get second edition which runs into the 90s and then we get 3.5 which runs into the 2000s four is from 2007 to 2014 so we are definitely in a golden era of an edition lasting the longest it's ever had I by would, far yeah well i mean like so a six it really edition, depends on what they print because yeah. like it sounds more like 5.5 .5 to me than oh what's happening now yeah Oh, what's happening now is not a new edition at all. They've no, completely but, backed it off. It, yeah, it's it's a five point three. I'll, I'll see what they. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's definitely changing it, but it's still fifth edition. Yeah. So and uh, I and if we're gonna have this conversation, I would argue that after ten years, like if you want to do some rules revisions, yeah, I think it's about time. Yeah, uh, um, DLC. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Well, we have the uh, oh, if you want to sponsor Ilian and Beeren <laughs> on their journey to collect all the shards of substantial supporters to eventually form them into the pendant of plenteous patrons once again to use it so they can do their stuff. <laughs> you can do that by going to patreoncom slash the dungeon cast. <laughs> go there, and you can uh, you can subscribe to tiers that are the tier in space is actually a a Ilian and Beeren extra content dedicated. There's one recording there, and then we'll got super sick, so there I should did. be two by now. Uh, but there's stuff in there that is you can listen to all the Ir Ilian and Beeren so far in a row. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. How about that? <laughs> How about that? Uh, there's been a lot. It's like over like three hours of just us doing the skits. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. It's insane. I was like shocked when I was putting it together. Like, no way we've been we made this much stuff uh, well i definitely think like for the first like 10 to 15 we were going over time i think we were hitting these skits and getting to like close to 10 minutes and then we started to back it off so i think they were only ever supposed to be like a couple minutes yeah each. now i think we average like four to four and a half minutes per skit which that sounds I'm about right with. i'm comfortable yeah. with that yeah 
So you can see them there. Patreon.com slash the Dungeon Cast. We have the Ion Keg. Uh, large monstrosity of unaligned uh, moral. It doesn't take sides. No. It just wants to eat you. Uh, armor class is 14. Natty. 11 while prone. Oh, it's got a tender underbelly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, prone means it's on its back, I guess. What do you like? Yeah. It fell down. So pine is on your back, actually, if we're talking medically speaking. If it fell, if it falls down, its armor just kind of like opens up. You can see it's soft places. <laughs> like a video game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> HP is 39. Uh, that's 60, 10 plus 6. Uh, speed is 30 feet. It can burrow 10 feet. That's pretty slow. That tube in its body isn't as big as it probably could be. Uh, maybe it just it is really digging. Yeah, I think it's really digging. Oh, it That's what I'm takes saying, a, man. A it's, not, years. it's not like a purple worm where it's just, you know. <laughs> yeah. Where did the dirt? This isn't Dune. Where does the dirt? Okay, I'm going to save the Dune style joke for the Patreon content. But where did the dirt and the purple worm go? Eat the dirt? Yeah, purple worm eats eats a lot of the. But dirt. where the dirt go? It comes out the other side. D immediately. I think at, at a fairly even pace. So it's a just a dirt rocket. It's a dirt. <laughs> yeah, it's a dirt so, rocket. So, per, but there are purple worm tunnels. Yes, definitely. So it's not getting rid of all the dirt. It's no. not like a one for one ratio. It's digesting and absorbing minerals and stuff from the dirt for sure. Oh wow! I mean, it's, it's got eating, a lot of body to it maintain. It eats dirt. What? It eat the dirt. Yeah, definitely eat the dirt. Okay. But this thing don't eat the dirt. N I don't think so. Not with a bro speed of 10 feet. Nah. Can't possibly be eating 10, the dirt. I mean, 10 feet every six seconds is pretty impressive. Maybe it eat dirt sometimes. Like, uh... Some dirt gets in there. It's like, ooh, pica. I eat the dirt. Okay. These minerals will help my chitin. Well, no, actually, yeah, no, it is confirmed that they eat a lot of soil because, yeah, the, they, they sustain themselves on the minerals of the soil. The sweet minerals. So they eat half the dirt. The other half they don't eat. And they can't eat salt because that's a different category. In There's D &D. salt in the earth. For There's sure. salt in the earth, but if they go to, the, they can't go. They can't live in the plane of salt. They can live no. in the plane of mineral. Yeah. <laughs> Strength is seventeen. Oh wait, I, just, I do the the modifiers now. Strength is plus three. Dex plus zero. Con plus one. Intelligence minus five. This thing is fucking dumb as it can possibly. Dumb as rocks. If it were any dumber, it would be dead. It wouldn't. It would be. It would be rocks. <laughs> well, it'd be a rock. Yeah, that's for sure. This is rock manifest. You can't have a zero ability score. If you have a zero ability score, you die. Right. Yeah. Okay. So if he was one dumber, he'd be dead. He'd be dead because his brain don't work no yeah, more. Exactly. I ate too many dirt. Uh, uh, wisdom plus one, charisma minus two. Why is it so stupid? Like, <laughs> they didn't have to make it that dumb. It is so dumb. <laughs> it is one smarter than a rock. They just want to. That's also the uh, like the hallmark of a monster is a low intelligence score, like in D and D. Yeah, sure. Otherwise, they organize. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And then the the union busting wizard has to come and show up and f tell them Some to fuck off. Some intelligent things are still fucking monsters, like beholders. Yes, yeah, they're intelligent yeah. as shit. But they organize too. They do. Organize and they definitely too. union bust. Yeah, they definitely union bust. And they're like got goblin slaves that are really sad. They don't get breaks. <laughs> uh, senses, dark I'm, vision, sixty feet. <laughs> I'm going to introduce a beholder in my elemental campaign. I'm going to name him uh, Mr. Manfred because Rob Manfred, he's the commissioner of baseball, is a infamous union buster. Oh, great. Yeah. Cool. Who has failed at his job so far in baseball? But anyways, I digress. Go ahead. I I have no comment. Yeah. Uh, Tremor sense is sixty feet. They have a passive perception of eleven. They don't speak no language. How could they? <laughs> Fucking idiots! <laughs> you dumb, dumb, dumb idiots. Okay, we got challenge rating two. That's four hundred fifty XP. Proficiency bonus plus two. Actions. They bite, baby. They bite. They, so oh yeah. Good. It's my like mother's, half of what they do. My mother's mandibles. That was the joke I was looking up at the very beginning of the show. It was the crimson chin from Fairly Odd Parents. Okay, cool. Uh, it, but it bite. Melee weapon attack plus five to hit. Reach of five feet. One target. Hit is going to be 10 or 2d6 plus three slashing damage plus three 1d6 acid damage. That's that, cool. So I like when they do that. Me too. Uh, if the target is a large or smaller creature, it is grappled. Escape DC 13. Uh, until the grapple ends, the Ankeg can bite only the grappled creature and has advantage on attack rolls to do so. I think that's cool. I do, too. It just starts to eat you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> that's all it knows. <laughs> that's all it knows. That's all it does. It has one one point in intelligence, and it say uh, dig and eat. Yep. Eat dirt. Well, also acid spray, which we're about to talk about. Uh, that's more like a wisdom thing. It's just a trigger. 
You think it's just instinctual? Like, it's oops. just instinctual. It has to be. <laughs> the ant keg spits acid in a line that is 30 feet long and 5 feet wide, provided that it has no creature grappled. Uh, each creature in that line must make a DC 13 dexterity saving throw, taking 10 or 3d6 acid damage on a failed save, or half as much damage on a successful one. Okay, you cannot tell me that this thing cannot have... All right, the ant keg's chewing on a guy, right? So mechanically you can't use acid spray but i say why can't it because that seems like a very efficient way to get your food eaten is like you're chewing on them and like oh you got them right there <laughs> hose them down make them easier to chew right maybe it's a risk of getting the acid on itself i mean i don't know i'm never i'm almost never a fan of a creature's like secretions or breath attacks or whatever damaging Me neither. itself. Oh, I, I just watched it. Oh, what, what were you gonna say? No, I was just cut. Like, I just wanted to cut you off at a certain point. It was like, oh, yeah, I don't like secretions either. I just watched a movie creatures. on Netflix, brand new with a very famous up and coming, was a child actress. Now, she, now I guess she's just an actress. I'm not gonna say the name of the movie, but I'm gonna spoil the fuck out of the ending. What? What are you doing? You can't you can't drop a spoiler tag without uh, telling people what the spoiler is for. I, okay, spoiler for Damsel. Just saw Damsel with Bobby Millie 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 Bobby, Millie Bobby Brown? Brown. That one, oh, yes. Man. She's problematic. Okay, is so she? Don't I think, know. I'm pretty sure. There's a dragon. Anyway, skip ahead like get it get in like 30 seconds. All right. There's a dragon. Dragon almost dies by getting its own fire on itself and I thought that was stupid as hell. Moving on. There you go. That's what this is. that's what's happening here. Um Spoilers are over now. Okay, cool. And then there's a bunch of lore stuff. That was the whole stat block. Not very beefy. Uh, not a lot. Not enough variety here for what this thing is. Um, do they live in colonies or something? Uh, they're mostly solitary. I actually used an Honkeg recently um, in my current campaign. Uh, five level one characters. This thing almost Oh, that's just a boss. This yeah. thing almost had them. It was a boss. It was supposed to be a boss. But you know what? They killed it. And uh, it was a, I reskinned it, so it was just a giant crab. Um, but, uh, so they, uh, but it take like seven, seven successful hits on it to kill it. Or well, the, eight? it was a, it was kind of a two phase fight because, uh, two characters scouted ahead, ran into it, pulled out all their stops to try and stay alive while they ran away. Okay. So they weakened it. Yeah. Managed to get it to chase them up half the tunnel. The other, the remaining party ran down when they heard what was going on. They killed it in the tunnel and then they proceeded to cook it and they ate it. Yeah, I mean, like... This... It was a giant crab. Again, reskin. It was a reskin. Yeah, so I would definitely be but, like, hey, a crab. Yeah, but mechanically, it was this. And uh, good job, guys. You killed Big it. meaty claws. Big meaty claws. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, sick. Good. That's a good one. Yeah, this thing, I could see you reskinning it to be a crab. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, I didn't give it the acid spray. I felt that was too much for the level one characters. Uh, I'm that was right. Star Wars monster. What's that thing called? Sarlacc? No, dude, the one that looks like this thing. It's in um, um, Attack of the Clones. Oh, they ride man. it. I haven't seen that movie in decades. <laughs> it's this thing. Oh, no shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Close. It doesn't really look like it. Uh, general head and body shape are there, I think. Yes. But the, it, the it head, is walking yeah. more like a spider. Yeah, it's got a spider. It. But spider it, it kind of, like, like, what's this thing called? An acolyte. Oh, wow. Yeah. Close name. Yeah, I think it's inspired. I think so. Wow. Anyway, that's all I have. All right, let's get ready for a long rest. Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the long rest. This is a part of the show where we get cozy and talk to y'all. And for this segment, I have my, uh, my chitinous slippers on that don't keep me very warm, but keep me very protected. Nice, very nice. Yeah, and I can kick the ground, and I can dig 10 feet per round by doing that. <laughs> That's so impressive. Yeah, uh, it is. <laughs> it really is. Um, okay, this week we've got, for fan interaction portion, we've got YouTube comments from the Sahanin Moonbow episode. All right. Uh, so we're going to start. We're just going to go. What I normally do is just kind of scroll all of the comments top down. Um, I think that means they go from most recent to, you know, oldest uh, i would say make sure to do the filter that uh doesn't exclude the ones we've responded to i always do cool uh mm -hmm. i i'm i'm all about seeing the truth indeed indeed uh, all right so if you want uh we you know once a month we're gonna read 
or more, we're going to read YouTube comments. So get those comments in there. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. It really helps uh, push the show to new listeners on YouTube. That's the algorithm for you. Um, but we really appreciate everybody that came in for a comment. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, our homie, Wallupoff. Hey, it's Wallupoff. I, uh, on both Discord and YouTube. Wal- Wallupoff. Let me know if it's Wallupoff or Wallupoff. Just, you know, I know you're hearing this. <laughs> Yes. We know who you are. Uh, Coralon, uh, can I copy? Uh, this is like a uh, a little skit they've done in there. Oh. In there. So Coralon okay. says, can I copy your moon goddess? And Ao says, sure, just change it a bit. Coralon says, I'll change a few letters in her name and give her pointy ears. <laughs> Silly. Cool. Um, hey, Forgotten Realms isn't everything. Coralon exists in like all the settings. Yeah, that was, uh, I, I don't know if. I think it's in this comment section where people confirm that for me anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, like how the I think go- I had the question too of like Coralon's yeah. power level, and they're like, yeah, the 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 they're collecting the prayers from everywhere. Yeah, the yeah. the the racial deities are often amongst the absolute most powerful for that reason, and that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, Lucas FF one four three four says Tyr is a god of Norse mythology and is present in Forgotten Realms. True. Yeah, there is like Zeus. Exists. Yeah, yeah, they got yeah. Greek, Egyptian, and uh, Nordic deities in Forgotten Realms. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bozo Dodge one eight three eight says, "I'm a simple man. I see moon and elves, and then I say shout out to Elastrai. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. And so uh, we'll get an episode one day, probably this year. We'll Gengishkan six eight zero nine says, "Damn it, beat me to it. Yeah, you were beaten. <laughs> it happens." Uh, Tony Romasco, 1735, says, A moonbow is created by moonlight on a waterfall. Victoria Falls in Africa is known for moonbows. Okay. Uh, we're going to see a lot of different takes on this in this conversation. Yeah, I mean, I I'm willing to accept that as, as, as a take. Like, I didn't think about that. Oh, yeah, me too. I knew moonbows existed in the rainbow context. Yeah, I think um, I was. But I think her symbol, like, even has a bow. Maybe I'm tripping. Yeah, I, I remember kind of thinking, like, maybe it has something to do with light. Uh, anyway, Keith Johnson, 8721, says, The only thing D&D doesn't have a god for is premature ejaculation. Whoa. <laughs> but it's coming quickly. Oh, my God. Ah. Boo. I'll heart it. <laughs> um, Heth Stevens, 4068, says, Thank you for that thick, and that's what two Cs, episode, and the even thicker shout-out. Love the sticker that came today. Oh, you must be a patron. So, sh- woo. Um, hey, um, so I pulled up Sandy Moonbow's um, symbol, and I was wrong about the bow. And now I'm looking at it like, what do you think? Do you think that's supposed to be like a like a rainbow, like a moonbow above it? Like, or what do you uh, think? What do you that think that is? Looks like a ceremonial hat, but yes, a bow, a bend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it represents light from the moon. Is what this is really about. Okay, cool. Um, anywho, uh, Timothy Hanna. 6304 says, I just want to say your videos have taken a noticeable level up in quality. Hmm. Between the midpoint jingle that I still hum every time to the audio quality to the script writing, you guys have come a long way to episodes on Jackalware and Knowles. On top of that, the shorts with Ilian and Beern. Oh, nice spelling on Beern. I like that a lot, actually. <laughs> I wish I had seen this before I, I canonized it. Uh, forgive misspells. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. <laughs> forgive them, William. I forgive you. You are forgiven uh, is comic genius. And where normally I shut off my brain on ads, yours has been entertaining and enticing. Great job, guys. And I wish nothing but encouragement going forward. Side note, what was that? Uh, what was the Tenchi Mayo Muya arc in Super Quest Saga? I watched the campaign, but I'm not familiar with the reference. Did I respond to that one? I feel Spo- like I responded to I that I think one. you did. Yeah, the Bellerophon arc. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, with Ryoka. Mm-hmm. Um, spoilers for Saga. <laughs> with, all, with all the very slightly named, um, uh, renamed characters. Yes, they are like letters adjacent. They're just a single letter I change in each one. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, um, thank you for that. Um, it has been, uh, I, I was always scared to get too loud because it sounds so gritty sometimes, but, um, you know, it, it, it needed to be done. And we ha- we, we've improved a lot as we've gone along, and it's with, uh, listener suggestions and stuff like that. So that's why I always suggest for new listeners, start at the beginning. It's better quality product up here. But the old stuff is really fun and cool also, like in terms yeah, of subject matter. Absolutely. Um, but we're really glad. Thank you for doing that. The The positive affirmations is... Uh, Always nice to hear. Yeah. I mean, it helped, it helped me do show good when you say good job. 
Thank <laughs> it's you. It's true. It's very true. Uh, the slacker named Jack says, "Hey, Hi. What's this guy? Uh, I actually." <laughs> Hey, we know him. We know him. <laughs> I actually bought a new mug from the Shopify to replace my shout out to Demogorgon mug. Yeah, so Jack, we saw. I saw. Was that Discord where uh, the yeah, mug was broken? Uh, was that broken. made me sad. I believe we, that was our very first patron annual. Um, <laughs> yeah, product. it is. We we have that art, but we don't make the cup. Like the cup was made for like it was a limited run, is what I'm trying to say. Mm, so. Yeah. It don't exist anymore, it man. Exist sorry, anymore, yeah. I, I was like, oh, we should send them one, but we can't. Yeah. So sorry, I, but I, I'm glad you got a new mug to replace your Demogorgon mug, and that you still have most of the Demogorgon mug. <laughs> I would definitely sand down those sharp edges somehow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you plan on keeping it. Uh. Very sad. Lord Food. Lord Fugda. Two S T. Anyway, uh, currently at a business conference with one AirPod in listening to this video. No one will ever know. <laughs> All right. Well, now they well they wouldn't they can't know in the moment. Now I yeah. can't affect that now. No one in that room probably knows. No, they might well, know now. But everyone who just heard that knows. Yeah. So they won't. It's not like they won't ever know. Well, I mean, theoretically, no one else in that conference call was listening. No, someone was. They might have been. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the FBI knows. Anyway, uh, Gila, Gila, Gila Nugs? Gila Nugs. Gila he, nu Gila Nugs. He, I'm thinking Gila Monster. Gila Nugs, because there's okay. two. Oh, I don't know. I'm not looking at it, so I'm just guessing. He's not. I am. I like to think of gods with the same or similar theme to represent different levels of a god. Uh, Saloon, or Salune, is the goddess of the moon, but she's like an OG god who is so large in scale, she covers so much. Dang, I should have expanded. This is so long. <laughs> always expand. Is, I should have, yeah, I should have expanded. Expand. Um, let's see. There's additional... I'll just read the end. There's an additional distinction to be made with how Salune is like moon goddess, but beyond Sahanin, the physical moon, and El Estrahi, only the moonlight uses the moon but that's a whole other discussion i mean to be fair i'm actually kind of reversed on this now with the confirmation of like the racial deities transcend the universe i'm like no so luna is just the goddess of the moon in forgotten realms right sunny okay. moonbo be representing that shit across the fucking multiverse she's a super moon yeah uh sorry for redacting your your comment i appreciate its length but i cannot do not have time to read it on the show. Sorry about that. Uh, Wraith Reaper 22. What's up, dude? Uh, so that's how you say her name, lol. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a nod one, but yeah, Sahanine. Or Sahanine. Sahanine. If you're from like the South. <laughs> Hannah. Uh Wes WTF2562 says, uh, there's also Illustra A Lee, another moon goddess. I I think they're referring to Elastrahi. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, I think it's a typo. I think so too. Yeah. Uh that's true. Yeah, uh, a lore master 1996 Hey, step off lore master. <laughs> you're you're treading on our ground. Lore master 1997 says, "Yay, I got my dono dono shout out. I'm Black Jester." My dono shout out? Oh, like donor shout out? Oh, hey. Hi Black Jester. Uh, they, that must be they, this must be a patron. Oh, I'm sorry about what I said about you stepping on our ground. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome on our ground. Welcome, Lore Master. <laughs> We're happy to have you here. Dove Keeper says the Shopify ad, ten out of ten. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was the culminating the oh, fourth was? Shopify oh, ad. Yeah, I'm pretty the, sure the Shopify saga. Yes, I believe it, it's either that one or the third one, which Bro, they're both good. I can't believe we didn't bring it up. Akira Toriyama died. We didn't bring it up on the show. Ah, uh, yeah, so it's a bummer. I, it's hard to work that in organically i but mean dbz comes up a lot but yeah it didn't come up these two episodes i try to keep it fresh i've watched a lot of anime since dbz but um yes akira, akira toriyama passed away and uh my heart was broken yeah a it's a very sad day we lost a legend a true legend like truly a legend yeah um you know for all of his faults and and triumphs i will miss him yeah. uh anyway uh nada nata Liazaring five two. Natalia, Natalia. 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 <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> FYI, no. FYI, a moon bow is another name for a crescent moon. It just means a bow-shaped moon. Oh, damn, I didn't expand this one. But it's okay. It wasn't a booby trap. It just means a bow-shaped moon, sort of like how a rainbow is a bow-shaped 
uh, after it rains. When fant- fantasy stuff names an actual weapon bow a moonbow, it's basically a play on words. IRL, moonbows are just the physical phenomenon. My One of my son's favorite things in the world is a crescent moon. He always, when he ever sees one, crescent moon. Crescent moon. Hey, yeah. that's cute. And then if it, and, you know, if it's cloudy, he's like, "Where's crescent moon? <laughs> crescent moon hiding." I always think of <laughs> angels in the outfield where they're like, "It's God's thumbnail." Oh yeah, yeah. Like, that's, you guys that's are stupid. Name. That's the moon. <laughs> anyway, uh, Lore Master nineteen ninety seven is back. They say you guys did it. You made the end game of ads. Oh, thank you. Hell yeah, we Again, did. Thank you. Uh, if you guys want to advertise, we t- we do advertising with Ilian and Beard was created to do adverts. Indeed. Which is why they search for our Patreon items. They Indeed. advert us. Indeed. Um, but if you, if anybody's listening out there that wants to sponsor Ilian and Beer, and we're happy to have that conversation, reach out to us at the dungeoncast at gmail.com, um, which is what happened with Spotify or with Shopify. Um, let's see. JDR Vargo 287 says at 2330, which I, I'm not going to click that timestamp right now. Oh, yeah. The battle was a hard fart. Uh, that's what happens when you eat the battle cabbage, Will. Oh, God, I forgot I misspoke that episode. <laughs> yeah, you begged me to edit that out. I did not. <laughs> I said I cannot. I'm so glad I left it in. Uh, hey, Loremaster1997 is back. I now know what anime that arc was based off of, and I definitely recognize it from a Google search, but never watch it. I guess I'm resubbing to Funimation. Sick. It's it's a wild ride, man. I say uh, Tenchi Muyo is the OVA, um, and, it, and it's a great series. It gets really weird at the end. Tenchi Universe is the more complete and digestible one. Probably my favorite, but uh, those are the main two. And then Lore Master replied to themselves and oh. said, uh, and this isn't very Lore Mastery of you, Lore Master, but also I thought she didn't use a bow anymore because she hit her father, but maybe that was Saloon. I don't know. No, Elastra is the one who shot her dad, and that was Lol's fault. <laughs> God damn it, I did it! I did it alive! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is confusing though. Uh, I will. I'll back you on that. Bo 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 nine three five five says Corlon has a presence in uh, any universe where an elf exists. That's my rule. Uh, I think that's like the canonical lore. Uh, their lore foundry responded to that said several of the greater gods exist in many universes. That's why they're so strong. They have followers in many worlds. Bahamut and Tiamat both exist in Dragonlance. Their names are Paladine and Tachesis. Just mm-hmm. one example. Yep. It's true. Yep. It's true. It's all true. Uh, Darnell1391 says, once again, the mention of the hashtag best goddess. I love Elastrali. <laughs> uh, JP Ander. O one says, according to the oh wait, hang on, yeah, according to the demi human deities of the two e, it's pronounced Ongaroth. Um, okay, cool. <laughs> Sir Nunos lives, says, uh, or maybe it's Ker Nunos. I'm pretty sure it's Sir Nunos. Elven deities, elder evils, and hard farts. Can't ask for any more in an episode on my day off. Please <laughs> praise the gods of commerce for Shopify. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is low key a Shopify ad. Yeah, I on mean, the back end here. I mean, uh, it means we did a good job. Superman T Mister Two Two Zero One. Wow, this is kind of wild. Not gonna lie, considering how many times Sahanine has been referenced over the years, it's cool to finally see her get her spotlight. Yeah, like I said, second favorite deity of all time. Reciprocated. Uh, Andy English 4303. Bro, it's just basic D&D cosmology that some gods are worshipped on multiple planets, which we knew. Moradin is actually the most powerful god in third edition because he's got dwarves from all over time and space sending in players. Well. Prayers, not players. Uh, the Lore Foundry responds. It says, but Lore, Lore Foundry should be responding. Bahamut Paladine and uh, Tiamat Takesis are other examples of greater gods in multiverse. I wonder which comment was first. Uh, and finally, August Augustus Dens. Augustus Dens. Uh, my favorite elven goddess. Let's go. Let's go. And we're going to call it right there. Have fun All with right. the pre recorded bit. Bye. Hey, everybody. We've got some news for you uh, about the dungeon cast. Will, do you want to hit it off with uh, Star Seeker's Guide to Dragon Star? What's going on? Well, oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, Star Seeker's Guide to Dragon Star, the book based off of Super Quest Saga, the uh, space sci fi campaign that we ran for three years. I'm still working hard on it, and I wanted to say thank you to everybody who supported us, both on Kickstarter and the Backer Kit. Um, but for anyone interested in in backing us on the Backer Kit, I wanted to say that your time is limited. I will be closing the Backer Kit on April 1st, charging cards probably in May. Um, I don't have the dates 100% on that when it comes to charging cards, but I will be closing out the Backer Kit 
on April 1st. I just really want to wrap a bow on this. And again, thank you to everyone who has supported. And um, yeah, go ahead and get in there. Go, uh, it's jackandstar.com. Uh, if you want to pre-order the books and there's also the add-ons, there's the dice set and there's the poster um, as well as a few other things. And uh, yeah, go ahead and check it out. But just so everyone knows, I will be closing the back again on April 1st. So after that point, pre-orders will no longer be open. Um, everyone who's made their order will be getting their book and there will be no more orders accepted. So there you have it. Yeah. Um, so check out Star Seekers Guide to Dragon Star. That's um the, what was the website? Dragonstar.com. 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 It's based off of our actual play D&D game, Super Quest Saga, which we also encourage you to check out right now. FBATS is going to be airing again, um, so there should be new episodes up. Uh, let's see. We got the merch store. Um, we still have uh, are working on our brand new merch store. We're going to have two merch stores. It's going to be a little weird for a second. Yeah, but we have uh, we have great news coming very soon about the new one. Yeah, so you'll hear that soon. But our regular merch store with just the regular Dungeon Cast stuff is available. There's a link in the description below. You can also follow us on Discord. That's a place we love to interact with fans. Indeed. Uh, so come talk to us there. You can also find us on social media at the Dungeon Cast on X, Mastodon, and Instagram. Thank you to Will for uh, doing stuff like that. And mm -hmm. if you want to support us, one of the best ways to do that is is by leaving a review, telling a friend, and, and by leaving a review, I mean on Apple Podcasts or anywhere you listen to the show, hitting that like and subscribe on YouTube, um, or supporting us on Patreon.com slash The Dungeon Cast. We have early episodes that are ad-free, along with a slew of other material that you can reference, including notes for the show, um, fun skits. Now we have an Alien and Beer in tier. We have fucking all kinds of stuff. So go check it out. Uh, and with that, we're going to call it a game. Let's call it a game. We'll talk to you guys later. The Dungeon Cast.